Hello, ladies and gentlemen. All right, welcome back for another video talking about angles. So at this point, you've already learned how to draw angles in what we call standard position. Okay, so this is something we already know. Yay! <laughs> okay, so today what are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about, because those angles, why am I, why am I referring to drawing angles in standard position? Because those angles have a terminal side. Okay, so I want you to think about the name of today's lesson. Today's lesson is about coterminal, coterminal <laughs> angles. And so if you think about what that would mean, that would mean that they're cooperating or like they're coordinated, right? Or think about co, all the different words that start with co. They're somehow related to that terminal side of the angles we've already talked about. So first off, let's see what this says down here. This says, first, what would happen if you spin around the origin more than once? So what I mean is what would happen if you started at your initial side, you went all the way around, and then you went a little bit extra? what would happen? Can you even do that? Well, the answer is yes, you totally can do that. And we're going to talk about what that means today. So I'm going to start by just giving you, you know, kind of two examples to take a look at. Okay. And then we'll, we'll do a bunch of practice. All right. To hopefully solidify this idea. So first off, let me just start off by saying the definition of what a coterminal angle is. And a coterminal angle is a pair or more because there really are many of angles that share a terminal side. Okay, so let me draw you an angle for starters, okay? And I'm just going to make, for this first example for sure, I'm going to make these numbers pretty easy. Okay, so right here, what I have drawn for you is a positive 60 degree angle, okay? And so, 60 degrees, that's the angle I've drawn. Now what if I said I wanted to go around 360 degrees so that's to this spot that I'm landing you know back at zero and I wanted to go 60 degrees so I wanted to add 360 degrees to this measure this spot right here that's landing where this red ray is would also represent 420 degrees okay what if I said I wanted to go around not once, but twice, and then land there? Well, that would be two rotations of 360 degrees. And so that would be a grand total of 780 degrees, right? All of those angles, 60, 420, 780, are coterminal to one another. And more specifically, they're all positively coterminal not because I added 360 but because they all ended up as positive values okay because they're positive numbers okay so let me take that same 60 degree angle all right which rotates up this way what if I was there and for some crazy reason I was like I don't want to spin counterclockwise. I want to spin from here and I want to spin clockwise. I want to go around the clock. Well, do you see how that overlapped through that 60 and went backwards? Hopefully you can see that overlap in those rays, those directional arrows. What I would be doing is I'd be saying, okay, I was at 60 degrees and then I'm going to subtract 360 degrees, which would mean that I'm actually at negative 300 degrees okay and so what if when I get there I'm like you know what that was so much fun I'm gonna spin around so not the once 
but twice. And then I want to land there. So I want to subtract 360 a second time. That means I'm at negative 760 degrees. Okay? These are negative coterminal. But only these two. Because they have a negative sign. Okay? So how do you find? So in summary... How to find coterminal angles? Well, in degrees, I haven't talked about this yet, but I'm going to give you some examples, don't worry. In degrees, you add or subtract 360 degrees because you're adding or subtracting a rotation, all right? And in radians, we'll think about this for a second. What's one rotation in radians? You would add or subtract, hopefully you're thinking in your head, 2 pi. So in general, you want to think about adding or subtracting 1 rotation around the circle. And that's one full rotation. So when it's one full rotation, they're going to land back in the exact same place that you were starting. Okay, so just really want you to think about that. So we're going to do some practice, and I'm going to try and find you some that are in radians first, since I just did some that are in degrees. So, by the way, what do these directions say? Just so I make sure I do all the things. Find a positive and a negative coterminal angle. All right. And then... Remember that those should be in the same units as the original angle. So please, for the love of all that is mathematically holy, do not convert your radians into degrees, find the coterminal, and then convert back. You are just wasting your brain power that you could be spending on like far more interesting thoughts. If the angle's in radians, leave it in radians. Just add or subtract 2 pi. If the angle's in degrees, add or subtract 360. Okay, that's my little virtual soapbox about staying in the same units. Please! You'll thank yourself, really, later. Okay, so first off, I think that if we're still having a little trouble visualizing where certain angles are, it might help to draw them. Okay, and actually, even in drawing them, you may find a coterminal angle. So, for example, 11 pi thirds... That's a pretty big angle, okay? So what I'm going to do for sure, why do I know that that's a big angle? I should probably talk about that. Well, let's talk about the fact that 2 pi is one full rotation, which would be equivalent to 6 pi over 3. Why did I change that to 6 pi over 3? Because I want a common denominator with the angle that I'm looking at right now. So how do I know that 11 pi thirds is a big angle? Well, it's bigger than one rotation. So I'm going to subtract 6 pi over 3, just so I can figure out where this is going to land. And so 11 minus 6 is 5 pi over 3. And so I know that the original angle, this guy, 11 pi over 3, would land, actually I'm going to change the color that I did that in, sorry. Would land, we would go all the way around, and then we would land, 5 pi over 3 lands in the fourth quadrant. So we would land way over here. Okay, so do you see how I went all the way around once, and then all the way around and land in, in the fourth quadrant? That's where 11 pi thirds would land. And so I subtracted that whole rotation, and 5 pi thirds would land in the same place. And because that's a positive, this is my positive angle, okay? So that angle is 5 pi over 3. I'm going to take that 5 pi over 3, and I want to know what a negative equivalent is. You could also kind of like think about this in your head. What's this space right here? Well, if this was 5 pi thirds, that's probably a third. Just in the negative direction, that's like negative one-third. But we'll just check to make sure. So I'm going to subtract 6 pi over 3 again. And 5 minus 6 would be negative pi, negative 1 pi. And so that's going to be our negative coterminal angle. So that's one of them. And this is our other answer. And again, I want to point out, 
I subtracted 6 pi over 3, and my answer was positive. So that's why my po that's my positive coterminal angle. Okay? So I'm going to do one more here for you, and then I'm going to give you some time to, like, practice and then check your answers. By the way, I do want to point out these two answers are just two of, like, an a small amount of infinite answers that you could have that are accurate. As long as the angle lands in the fourth quadrant in that same location as 11 pi thirds, you have a coterminal angle. So these are just the closest two that I found, okay? And that's typically what we're gonna, we are gonna find is the closest ones for you. Okay, so in this next one, we're gonna say, okay, again, radians, so we need to deal with two pi. This time I'm gonna say two pi is equivalent to 12 pi over six. You may be wondering, why did you do it 12 over six? Because 12 divided by six is two, and now I have a common denominator. So again, I'm gonna, if I subtract 12 pi over six, I'm gonna get some ginormous numerator. I don't want that. So I'm gonna add 12 pi over six. Okay, and that's gonna get me, oh, and actually, I just realized I could have reduced this. Let's do that, okay? We don't want to deal with such big numbers if we don't have to. So scratch that. We're not gonna need that. We're probably gonna need six pi over three, I bet. All right, so this angle is equivalent to negative 10 pi over three. And we're still gonna add, but we're gonna add six pi over three. And we are going to get negative four pi over three. So we found a negative angle. And then, since that angle is still negative, I'm going to take that number, negative 4 pi over 3, and I'm going to add 6 pi over 3 again. And that's going to get me 2 pi over 3. And since that number is positive, that's my positive that I wanted to find. So now I found my closest 2. And just to kind of give you a visual, again, let's figure out where this would land. So I'm going to draw the original one, okay? I'm going to draw this guy right here. That one would have been one whole rotation around, and then negative 4 pi over 3 lands in the second quadrant, kind of right here, okay? And then if you notice 2 pi over 3, that would land right here, going the positive route, and negative 4 pi over 3, that's just one rotation into that second quadrant. Okay, so what I'd like you guys to do is I'd like you to try A and B on this page, you know, at the top, and then I'd like you to definitely try at least E and H, okay, and I'll put these answers up here after you pause, okay? So you'll be able to check all your work and see where you're at. All right, folks, here are two potential answers to A and B, and I just want to reiterate that this first answer is the negative answer because the value is negative, and this second answer is the positive angle because it is a positive number, okay? It doesn't matter what you used to get the answer. When you're looking for a positive coterminal angle, it's because the angle itself has a plus or a negative because that angle has a negative, all right? So keep working, and then you'll see the answers to the ones um, E, F, G, H, all that good stuff. All right, folks, so here are your answers for this next section of problems, all right? Now I wanna no point out a couple of things. So we've got our negative answer here, our positive answer there, negative, positive. Again, these are not the only answers, these are the closest answers. What I want you to notice here is that in letter G, when I subtracted 360 twice, I still had a positive angle. So either one of these, 460 or 100, those would count as your positives but you'd have to keep going until you get to negative 260 degrees because that is an angle that has a negative sign in front. And then you just needed to do minus eight pi over four twice in order to get a positive and a negative angle for letter H, all right? So this is a little uh, Princess Bride re reference. I don't have much time, so I'd like to say let me explain. No, there's too much. Let me sum up. So coterminal. Angles land in the same spot. They are one rotation apart, and you add or subtract 360 if you're in degrees, or you add or subtract two pi if you're in radians to find those angles that land in those same spots. 
All right, folks. Thank you so much for listening, and have fun storming the castle. Bye.